Important as urban transportation has been, there are limits to what it can explain, as with any other factor. And some people have exceeded those limits when seeking to explain some social phenomena by transportation costs. For example, the movement of inner city jobs to the suburbs, especially after the 1960s, has been regarded by some as the reason for the dramatic rise in rates of unemployment in inner city ghettos. And that, in turn, has been seen as a reason for the sharp increase in such other social pathologies as rising crime rates and disintegrating families in these neighborhoods. But the fact that these striking trends have been correlated does not tell us which one caused the others, or whether they were all caused by something else. However, the movement of jobs has been undeniable and of a major magnitude, as in the case of a Chicago neighborhood. Two large factories anchored the economy of this West Side neighborhood in its good old days. The Hawthorne plant of Western Electric, which employed over 43,000 workers, and an international harvester plant with 14,000 workers. The world headquarters for Sears Roebuck and Company was located there, providing another 10,000 jobs. But conditions rapidly changed. Harvester closed its doors in the late 1960s. Sears moved most of its offices to the Loop in downtown Chicago in 1973. The Hawthorne plant gradually phased out its operations and finally shut down in 1984. From this, some have concluded that the movement of jobs to the suburbs created such high transportation costs in both time and money that these jobs were now beyond the range of most inner city residents. The resulting economic breakdown in these communities is then blamed for such social breakdowns as a welfare culture with fatherless children and skyrocketing rates of crime and violence. However, businesses and jobs did not leave this neighborhood for no reason. It costs considerable money to relocate operations that employ thousands of people. Moreover, in Chicago, as in other cities, massive movements of businesses out of the inner city followed the urban riots which swept across the country in the 1960s. The Chicago community mentioned above lost an estimated three-quarters of its businesses during the decade of the 1960s. In short, the riots represented a social breakdown that occurred before the movement of businesses out of inner-city ghettos. Moreover, in Indianapolis, where the employers did not move as